this is Cobb. Cobb gives you excellent thermal mass heat storage. So it's a critical part of a successful passive solar design, a building that's going to heat itself and cool itself as much as possible. It's thermal mass as well as insulation. Here on the north side of the building, for better insulation, we use straw bale. Thermal mass, like Earth, is a completely critical part of an effective passive solar design. This is designed as a passive solar structure, so the thermal mass of the cob is on the south side of the building where the sun hits. You can't build a good passive solar house out of two by fours and cheap rock and, and styrofoam insulation because you don't have the mass. So this is actually a hybrid structure. The back, the part to the left of this wall is straw bale and the part to the right is cob. Straw bale and cob hybrid buildings are very common. And what you tend to see is straw bale walls on the north side of the building where you most want your insulation. And cob on the south side of the building, the part that gets hit by the winter sun. So the cob can absorb the heat from the winter sun and re-radiate that into your building later to, to help warm it. That also makes sense because you tend to have most of your glazing, most of your windows on the south side. And if you want a whole lot of windows on one wall, straw bale ends up being a difficult choice to do that with. Straw bale on the north, and you see these big, pretty flat walls without many windows. That's straw bale. And so that's one very simple and obvious hybrid system. It's something like Straw bale on the north for insulation, cob on the south for sculpture and thermal mass. And this interior wall here, this is cob up this high. And the cob is here for thermal mass. It absorbs heat from the wood stove when the wood stove is going. It also absorbs sun, sunlight directly in the winter coming through these windows. The midday sun shines on this cob and heats it up. The earth provides a lot of thermal mass, which heats up very slowly and cools down very slowly. So it's a really, really effective way to cool a house, in a, particularly in a dry climate like this. Now, historically, if you look at hot desert architecture anywhere in the world, what you see is really thick masonry walls made out of earth, usually, or stone. Those walls hold the coolness from the nighttime and very, very slowly heat up during the day. The way we do it here, at night we open up all the windows and we let the cool night air come through the house and that discharges any heat that's been stored up in the thermal mass during the hot day. And then in the morning we close up all the windows and just keep that coolness locked inside the building. In the winter, it works pretty much the same way, except, of course, you don't open the windows at night. You leave them closed. And the sun, the low-angle winter sun shining in through the south-facing glass, that heat is absorbed into the thermal mass. Really good place for that thermal mass is in the floor. So we do these earthen floors in most of our structures. This is just made out of a clay soil, sand, and straw, and sometimes gravel. And it's about four or five inches thick. And so the winter sun coming through hits on the earthen floor. The floor heats up during the day, as do any thermal mass walls that are close to the south side of the building and are also hit by the winter sun. All that heat is trapped inside the building. And then at night, when the sun goes down and the air temperature drops, the heat works its way back out of the thermal mass and heats the space.